Hi, my name's Stuart Humwick. I'm an EMEA pre-sales specialist in the SPS team here at Dell Technologies. Joining me for this demonstration are Julian PLA and Boris Chernick. Over the next few minutes, we're going to show you how easy it can be to automate your VPlex and PowerStore environment using Ansible to build simple, repeatable, declarative automation. Ansible allows us to deliver automation that can truly scale. And if we compare that with the previous way, previously, many organizations would have leveraged brute force scripting. But these scripts are difficult to alter and amend between different users. And it's challenging to allow them to scale and add extra tasks and extra items that we want them to do. Now, organizations are turning to new automation tools, such as Ansible, but there are many others too, like Chef, Puppet, and vRealize from VMware. These tools allow us to assemble pre-built modules by combining different elements together to build a complex workflow very, very simply and very, very rapidly. This way, we can deliver automation that can scale across the entire business, rather than a script that looks at one specific area. So why Ansible? Ansible is a universal language used not just for automation, but many other things besides, including developers and quality assurance teams. Some of the use cases include things like provisioning, continuous delivery, application deployment, and much more. If we compare Ansible with traditional scripting, traditional scripts require time. They're difficult to maintain and they require specific skills. Ansible's simple, it's incredibly powerful, it's really easy to learn, and it's completely agentless too. This means that we only need to install Ansible in one place, our Linux Ansible control host. It's here that we'll build all of our workflows, and we call them playbooks. They're actually based in a text file, which is a YAML file. It's a kind of markup language. But we don't need to install any other software anywhere else in the environment. Speaking of the environment, the environment we're using looks like this. We have two PowerStore arrays, one at each site. Two VPlex clusters, again, one at each site. And we also have some ESX hosts, which we're going to be provisioning storage to. We have two different SAN fabrics, SAN A and SAN B. And ultimately, what we're going to be doing is provisioning storage from the two power stores up to the two VPlexes, combining it at the VPlex level, and then provisioning it as a single metro distributed volume up to the host. So here's our first playbook. This is actually our master playbook, which actually imports two subsequent playbooks, one for the power store, one for the VPlex. This is easier to organize and control. The power store playbook looks like this. At the top, we have a few variable files, which we'll show you in a few seconds. And further down the screen, you can see we have two tasks. Firstly, create a volume on the first power store, and then create one on the second. You can see that each of these tasks has a specific amount of information that it needs. It needs a size for the volume, it needs a name for the volume, and it needs the all-important state. What state do we want that resource to be in? The variable files give us things like the IP address and also the credentials, which we've encrypted here for security reasons. We also have a variable file that gives us things like the size and the volume name alongside the host name too. This means we could easily change this and change the volume name and run the playbook again without needing to alter the context of the playbook or the scripts. Here we've got the layout for the VPlex playbook and you can see this actually calls quite a few more tasks because there's a few more jobs we need to do. One of these tasks looks like this. Effectively, under the covers, it's calling a post REST API call. So that's what's actually going on when we run this little bit of code through Ansible. Let's run the playbook. We run the playbook using the command that you can see on screen here. Now, when we run it, what it's going to do is it's going to ask for a password because we've encrypted our credentials file. Once we give it the password, it'll go ahead and carry out every task in turn that we've specified, starting with creating the volumes on the two power store arrays. And you can see that's done and changed because it's in yellow. It then goes on to discover the storage at the VPlex level and then create a metro distributed volume. That's an active active two site volume at the next and final step. And that's now completed. The entire process took around 10 to 15 seconds to complete from top to bottom. And it really is that simple and that straightforward. 
All we need to do now if we want to run it again is simply change the names of the volumes or perhaps the size and run the whole process again. Over in the VPlex GUI, we can see that we've created a new distributed volume. If we hit view map, we can see that we've got the storage for this distributed volume coming through from the two power store arrays, one at each site. It's coming up into our VPlex clusters and finally through to a new distributed volume right there in the center, just where we expect it to be. If we jump over to the power store GUI, we can refresh the screen and see that we've had a new volume created with the name that we specified in the specified side, size. On the second power store array, we can go ahead and confirm that we've successfully created the volume there too. The final place to check is over in vCenter, where we're able to confirm that the host in question can see the new disk that we've created. And here it is. So there you have it. It's as simple as that to provision storage for vPlex and PowerStore in one go.